Hi guys, Chris from The Ultimate Recycler. Just last week I had a call from a lady who was cleaning up an old shed and uh, wanted to get rid of some stuff. She was going to take it all to the tip, so I thought I'd better go and have a look. And uh, in amongst it was uh, some old bunk beds. They weren't actually that old, they were just sort of second-hand tubular steel. Uh, a bit rough, weren't really that saleable, but I thought, well, we should be able to make something out of those. So here's your next repurposing project. A couple of nice, comfortable garden seats or veranda seats um, put together very easily, just basic hand tools. So stay tuned to find out how it's done. Okay, so here's the bunk beds I've um, just dragged out of the van. Um, they've been in storage for some time. There's a bit of paint knocked off them. Uh, still quite grubby. So these are the ends. Um, there would have been a single type bed and then the other one stacked on top so the poles would have sort of slotted together. Um, it's fairly light gauge pipe, but um, it's quite strong. And uh, these tangs where the um, mattress base bolted to will actually make a pretty easy um, job to turn them into seats. So the ladder section I brought home, not that I'm going to use the pipe, but uh, I just needed to get enough of these little plastic caps um, just so the project's finished off and uh, there's four on this ladder. So that should give me enough to make two complete seats. So uh, first thing is we've got to roughly work out what width seat we're going to have. I'm using a rail from an old pallet here um, as the support and I'm just going to bolt the ends together on those uh, metal tangs that supported the mattress base. So I'm just marking the length here um, and scribing it nice and neat. Um, you have to make sure that the ends of these pallet rails are square because they're not cut particularly neatly sometimes. This one's pretty good and I'm just marking the other one off this one so they're both the same length and that will give me um, the two stays that actually hold the pipe assemblies together. So I'm using some old coach bolts that I found in a tin. Um, they're, uh, it's fairly critical too to have the drill the right size hole for the coach bolt to go through. Now if you don't know what a coach bolt is, here's a close up, they may be called something different overseas. They've got that square shank underneath the head and that allows them to be held in the timber if the hole's drilled the right size. So uh, now just to mark a couple of the holes, um, I'll just start the drill in to, to mark it and uh, that will give me a guide to drill out the holes. Um, so once that's done, you can see there that it's marked two spots. I'll do the same on the other end. Um, these tangs should all be the same dimensions, I would imagine, but um, you know, if they, it's a lot different, we'll have to drill a different hole, but they look okay at this stage. So then I'll drill through these stays, um, each end, um, and that will allow me to hammer the coach bolt through. And I'll just mark the holes from the other one so that they're all the same. And it won't matter what order they go on, they should all bolt up nicely. So I drill through this one as well. Um, you'll notice I'm not actually using many tools here. Uh, basically a drill and a handsaw uh, and a hacksaw to cut the pipe. But um, it's all pretty straightforward and simple, no really complicated skills required. Now just hammering the coach bolts through so that square section lodges firmly in the timber. And that means just one spanner will be able to do the bolts up. So there you have it. And uh, we'll just slot that through the, through the assembly there. Uh, I'll put some washers and a couple of nuts on there and do them up. And that will, um, that will give us uh, a good height from the ground for a seat um, and hopefully they'll, they'll work out quite well. So I'm bolting the other end up now just to give me a way to, to check that the seat level is going to be the right height. Um, so just loosely assembling these at this stage because I'm going to have to take them apart again to cut this second one down to size. So we'll assemble this other end as well. Um, I won't even put the nuts on this end. It's really just to get a check for the height. So there you go, it's now freestanding. Now a couple of other pallet rails, which will be the, the subframe for the seat. I'll just sit them across now. And the board that I'm going to use is the top boards. And that will allow me to work out the height to cut the front section. 
So I'll just mark across the pipe here. As it turns out, it's just above that second cross rail, so that'll work out quite neatly. Actually, I think it's just below the second cross rail. Uh, now, hacksaw, um, just to cut through the pipe, I could use an angle grinder, um, I could use a, a cut-off saw, but with most of my projects, I'm showing you how to assemble things with really simple basic hand tools. Um, and I've just clamped it to the saw horse to cut through, spin it around and cut the other side. Um, the hacksaw blade, uh, this is an 18 TPI or tooth teeth per inch. Um, probably should have used a slightly finer one because this is fairly thin gauge metal, but it cut through fine. Um, you're just going to make sure the tension is nice and tight on your hacksaw, otherwise you won't get a straight cut. And of course it can jam and snap. So I'll cut through the rest of this one, cut through pretty easily, and then uh, swing the thing around, clamp it on the other end, and uh, cut through here as well. As you can see, it's actually just below that second cross rail, and that will work out quite nicely to, uh, to fit on the seat. So I cut through the other side here, and that will give me the front legs for the seat. Uh, I've got a half round file here just to take any burrs off. Um, on the inside and the outside and uh, it'll also make the, the plastic stops that I'll be getting off the ladder section easy to just tap in. So now I can assemble this main frame of the seat. Um, the holes lined up quite well, you may need to make a minor adjustment with a file if they don't, but uh, they're doing up quite well. So I'll do them up now with a, a ring spanner. Um, much easier uh, to use the right tools. Um, ring spanners are easy to get and they're much easier or much more sensible to use than, uh, than a shifter or an adjustable wrench. Um, and I'll show you here, this is a, a SIG Chrome 716 ring spanner. Um, you can use, um, any, as long as it's a good quality ring spanner you won't have any troubles. Shifters cause you a bit of grief in that they're a bit worn and they're often worn and sloppy in the joints, especially the modern brands. You're a bit cheaper and they'll slip off and you'll you'll damage your knuckles and round the nuts off. So always been using the right tools. So we'll lever these plastic buns off the ladder section. Uh, they'll come out pretty easily and that'll just give the, the whole project a nice finished look. Um, now the rails that form the base of our seat, we'll just mark them off uh, and cut them and again the ends of some of these pallet timbers aren't always square and sometimes they're a bit split at the end so I like to get a nice neat cut. Uh, now assembling it, I always pre-drill these because uh, the cheaper timber can split quite easily and pellets are made out of fairly cheap timber but if it's assembled well it's nice and strong. So drilling some pilot holes on the front rail and the back rail and I could use um, large coach bolts to assemble this, I could also just nail it, um, but I've got a whole heap of um, uh, Phillips head screws from a job lot recently so they'll be just as easy uh, and probably a bit neater, drill them all down and the whole assembly is actually quite quite firm already, it's, uh, once we tighten the bolts up and with these cross members it's uh, nice and strong as you'd want for a seat. Alright, so there's not a lot left to do, we'll just trim the ends of the bolts off with a hacksaw, um, just so they're neat, file off any burrs, um, you don't want little sharp bits there that can cut the kitty's fingers or something. And I'm making a couple of end plates here just to tidy it up, it, not necessary to add these, but it just puts a cover over the end of the rails, keeps the weather off them, and gives a good end for the, the seat uh, planks to butt up against. So again I'm pre-drilling these. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier to pull the board up tight when you've pre-drilled them and you know, don't have any danger of any splitting. Uh, but that, I'll put these screws in here and this will secure the end of the or the first seat plank and I'll do the same the other end. Uh, now the seat width, I've, I've allowed these planks to hang over the front just a little bit. Now I want them all of course the same length so the one that I've used I'll use as a template and mark all the others off that same one. And uh, you'll notice I don't actually use a tape measure. Uh, I haven't used a tape measure for the whole project. You can just pretty well measure one piece of timber off another and you guarantee then that they're all going to be within a mill or two. Uh, whereas if you keep using the previous one, you can eventually get quite a difference in, uh, 
in timber lengths which won't look so good so we'll again mark this one off the previous one or the, the first one that I'm using as a template and then just laying them all out onto the seat um, the gaps between them uh, it's just the way it worked out it doesn't matter if they're slightly wider or if they're tighter you probably wouldn't have them butted up too tight because if this as a seat will be an outdoor seat um, the wood will swell when it gets wet and they'll buckle up so nice to leave a bit of a gap no real need to to have a spacer to space them all exactly um, by eye is fine because really doesn't matter if you've done it correctly or, or with a spacer or by eye it, it needs to look good so by eye is the way to go um, I'm just putting more Phillips head screws in here um, as I said I've got a whole lot of them recently and the seat's pretty much taking shape now uh, really um, come up quite nice and here's the pair of them I managed to make two out of the one bunk bed assembly all I really need now is a little bit of a sand on the edges and uh, if they're going to be outside in the weather probably just a coat of deck oil or something to protect the timber uh, and there you have it great repurposing project now the bits left over uh, looks like I've made the Sydney Harbour Bridge you could make a little bridge for the garden or perhaps mount the part the other ladder section up on top and make a coffee table to match the seats so a great repurposing project from a bunk bed okay thanks for watching hope you got something out of that we'd love some feedback and uh, ideas on where we should take this recycling thing we've got so many ideas and uh, and different tangents to follow um, so be sure to look up our about tab I'll get an introductory video on there and uh, it'll show you some of the things we want to cover but um, if you like some of our projects um, subscribe to our page share it with your friends we'd love some encouragement and um, look out for the next one